everybody. Andy Roman here. Welcome to Get Real with Andy. Today's topic, I'm going to get a little scientific on you here. I like to call this getting real with your subconscious. Hold on a second. You know, the subconscious contains all kinds of things that are slightly outside of our conscious awareness or not just slightly, it can be really seriously outside of our conscious awareness. We can have thoughts and impressions from the previous day, things that we're just ruminating about subliminally, but there's also a level that I call imprints. And for some reason, there's a level of overwhelm or pain and we can't deal with something. We will hold these imprints in our system. These imprints carry an emotional charge inevitably, and I say whatever carries the charge ends up in charge. These are the things that we protect ourselves from. These are things that inwardly motivate us in ways that we aren't aware of. These are the things that we avoid through addiction and addictive behavior because we don't want to feel them. So imprints is where it's at. Imprints are where it's at as a therapist and in terms of the healing process, big time. Because if you don't get to the imprint level, everything else is just coping. Everything else is improving your lot a little bit. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. But to me, if I have a garden, I don't just want to, you know, nip the weeds here and there. I want to get all the way to the roots of the weeds and plant the things that I want to flourish in my garden. So let's talk a little brain physiology here. Our brain is not only divided in the right and left hemisphere. You know, you've heard of that, the right brain and the left brain. Did you know that in times of stress and overwhelm, our right brain actually disconnects from the left brain because it, it gave us a survival edge, you know, long time ago, our ancestors. Those are the ones that were able to split off from their own fear response when they met the saber-toothed cat and run away successfully. The ones that were paralyzed by their fear, even for microseconds, ended up not being our ancestors. And so we have inherited this innate ability to just split off. And they've scientifically showed that the, the right and the left brain uh, disconnect. But there are also three horizontal levels, you could say, of the brain that are at play. I'm gonna get really scientific here. I hope you can bear with me because it's a very cool system that explains a lot and actually um, offers a model of how to have true integrative experiences because there's no shortcuts. The intellect cannot do the work of the feeling brain. You know, what's that saying? You, you can't think your way into a new way of feeling, but you can feel your way into a new way of thinking. It shows that there's a certain dominance of the lower aspects of the brain. So here you go. There's three levels. There's the vegetative, which is the lower part, the brain stem, the cerebellum. These are the parts that deal with the body response to things. It's very basic, fundamental. If somebody is in an accident and the higher levels of the brain are gone, we say that these people are in a vegetative state. It's been called the vegetative or the reptilian part of our brain. One up from that is called the mammalian brain. This is, we've inherited this and shared this with all mammals. So for anybody who says animals don't have feelings, they're just wrong. They're just wrong. They're in denial for their own whatever, whatever. Just wrong because we shared this feature of our own brain with other mammals. This is where emotions come from. This is, it comes from the limbic area of the central brain and the limbic loop. You know, read my books. You'll, I, I love this physiology. I love it. And I like to explain it. And I theorize some things about it that have actually panned out to be biologically accurate. I love when that happens. Then the top part of the brain is, I call it the high brain. You know, this is where the cerebral cortex is. This is our thinking function. This is where we abstract things. And this is more, more fundamentally where we give meaning to our experiences. 
when we're babies and we're brand new, we don't have experience. We don't have a history. So everything is really brand new. Nothing has a context for us. We'll see as a toddler or a little kid, see a gun. We don't, we don't know what it means. Babies just put stuff in their mouth. To a mother watching her baby put a gun in her mouth, you know, that has a meaning to it and the mom will freak out. So the older we get, we start, um, we've already created references, reference points about from our past experience. Unfortunately, this adds up uh, and it can add up in a negative way. It's helpful, of course, if you get hurt once, you want to remember what was involved so that you don't repeat that pain. Unfortunately, we also can end up creating these super intricate maps about what's real and what's what and what means what. This is People can have all different kinds of philosophies and views on life. And I'm telling you, none of it is actual reality. It's virtual. It's inner virtual reality. You know, this is a whole other topic of what's the difference between a belief and reality. And I tell you, the most profound part of that for me is that the body can't tell the difference. Also, let's do a little mind game here for a minute. I want you now to take a deep breath and I want you to remember what you had for breakfast yesterday. Not just what, but I want you to remember yourself having breakfast yesterday. Okay, I'm gonna tune in. All right, got that? It's a memory. It's some kind of an impression that's there. Now what I want you to do I want you to imagine yourself eating an ice cream cone for breakfast yesterday, okay? So I'm asking you to impose this imagination on actual timeline and see if you can do it. And I find I can do it. I can actually imagine myself having an ice cream cone for breakfast yesterday. So I'm saying, because our imagination actually influences our memories and our experiences, but there is a, there are some levels that are just real. You know, imagination in one sense is not real. Our body doesn't know the difference. That's the tricky part. We're in virtual reality. So there's so many young people today that are captivated and addicted to virtual reality. But the reality is we all are. We all are hung up on our own version of what's going on. We think that how we experience things is just the way it is. And it isn't. When we look at quantum physics, reality is everything is brand new. Nothing is stationary. Even these solid objects that look the same day to day are not the same. And they're primarily the space between these molecules and between the atoms and between the particles in the atom. It's just vast space. That's reality. And we think reality is, you know, this table is real. This thing is real. This is the stuff of Maya. This is the illusion. And I'm saying it's time to get real. I want to get real. I want to make whatever effort I can make to wake up from the illusion and the and the unreality that I, by nature, by second nature, carry around with me. I'm telling myself stuff about myself and about what's real, what I can do, what I deserve. Those are all subliminal. That's our subconscious. Most of it. If not all of it, it's just lies, lies. This, whether we like it or not, we're in the liberation arena because we're here as humans. We're like stuck in our condition of carrying imprints around. And these are imprints that we avoid. And I am suggesting that a big part of liberation is letting these imprints come to the surface, letting ourselves become aware of them, Letting these little fragmented parts, because I didn't mention that each part of the brain stores its information in a, in a specific molecule within ourselves. It's called a neuropeptide. And each neuropeptide contains information from our body response, from our emotional response, and from the meaning we give to it. When it's overwhelming or painful, we will split these into fragments. And these little fragments then free float in our system, in the form of anxiety. Anxiety is a future-oriented fear based on the past. 
And when we carry these unintegrated fragments of experience within us that are forever trying to reunite and we are forever fighting them, this is all inner conflict comes from that. There's the source of the lack of peace. I'm not saying when you integrate everything, there's peace, but at least there's a platform where peace has a place to, you know, to emerge. Peace is a whole deeper subject, which I'm delighted to talk about because I'm a student of that peace. I know that's within me and I, I want to make as much room for that as I can. It behooves me to do my inner work, you know, not because the inner work in and of itself is going to liberate me and bring me peace, but it sure makes room for it. And I'm all for that. When these things come to the surface, our resistance to them also comes because when they were originally imprinted within us, it was a matter of survival that we separated these little fragments and, and decided at some real deep subliminal level that in order to survive, I can't feel this. I can't be with it. I can't realize that I'll never get the love I want in my life. I can't feel the emotional pain of abandonment or betrayal or dismissal or ridicule. I can't feel the physicality of having been violated. Whatever it is for you, these are the things. It makes sense to separate those things out. It makes sense to repress them. Survival is not stupid until it is, until it's no longer really necessary for survival. And I'm going to reveal my big secret in therapy now. And that is, feel it and don't die. You know, I'm not going to write that on any brochure. I might have said this before. I'm not going to write that on a brochure. That's not the most appealing thing to hear. Oh, I'm going to go to therapy and feel something so devastating. All I have to do is not die to get the benefit. But unfortunately, th that's really the way it is. And I can help you with that. I'm here to help. I have received so much wonderful help in my life. I'm happy to be a conduit and to help out and share my experience and to just be there for you, to hold the kind of space that's required for deep integrative feeling experiences. Um, let's see if I have any final words to say about integrating. Imprints are where the charge is. That's the focus in my therapy because that charge whether we are aware of it or not, will leak out. And we will have these issues in our relationships. We will have these issues in our work life, in our physical health. It all leaks out because the body wants and almost demands that we integrate these things so that we can move on. And to see this in action is so awesome and so magical. I could tell you so many more experiences. And in fact, uh, you could read my books because I've written a lot of these stories in into my books because they're fascinating and they're so hopeful. Like if somebody can integrate that, Jesus, I can I can integrate what's happened to me. My childhood wasn't so terrible. I wasn't ritually traumatized or whatever. But I tell you, we're sensitive creatures. We don't have to be ritually tortured in order to carry suffering and to be in a state of jail on an ongoing basis. It's, it's little, it can be little things where we just limit ourselves. And it is time to unlimit, to take the limits off. You know, the ones that aren't real. I'm not saying we as humans or me, I don't have limitations. Hell, I'm getting older. I have, I have limitations. Okay. So listen, thank you so much that if you're really interested, and I'm really interested in this topic because it's personal, it's scientific, it's humanistic, it, it re I resonate with it. And when I tap into the process at a very personal level, then so much opens up for me. I'm fascinated. It's so cool to be alive and to be able to participate in this deep feeling integrative process. And then the world opens up to me. Then that peace that's natural, when I focus on that, I can be immersed. I can be drenched with peace. And also, it just seems that commingling with that deep level of peace is joy, is, in, is bliss, you know? Okay. I hope you catch 
a bit of my vibe here because it isn't me per se. It's something that I can't do it. I can't do it. You can't do it. Okay. Love you. Peace out.